Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. My name is Puan Seri Mastura and this is the lab briefing for lab 5 MOSFET Biasing and Frequency Response. The lab outcome for this lab are design, construct and test MOSFET common source amplifiers and understand the factors that govern the frequency response and control the frequency response of an amplifier. Before coming to the lab, you should have some basic knowledge on MOSFET functions, familiarize yourself with equations of MOSFET parameters, and you should have some basic knowledge on MOSFET amplifier configurations and equations. Following are the equipments and components that you need to perform the lab. First, DC supply, oscilloscope, function generator, breadboard or protoboard, enhancement mode and channel MOSFET 2N7000 capacitors and resistors. The lab instructions have been uploaded in the iFolio. For this lab 5, the experiment consists of two parts. All students are required to conduct all experiments in part A and in part B, student will be assigned one question based on the day that the student is performing the lab. The pre-lab has also been uploaded in the iFolio. You should complete all questions and perform the required simulation before coming to the lab. Now, let's look at the MOSFET operation. In this experiment, N-channel enhancement mode MOSFET is used. Shown here is the basic structure of this N-channel MOSFET. Similar to the JFET structure, which we have used in the previous experiment, MOSFET also consists of a drain, source and a gate. Applying a bias or a voltage at this gate controls the amount of electron flowing from the source to drain and therefore controlling the current flowing between the drain and the source. With zero bias applied at the gate, the source and the drain terminals are separated by the P region, which means that the transistor is turned off. At this point, the drain to the source current, IDS, is essentially zero. If a large enough positive gate voltage is applied, Voltage inversion layer is created and this layer connects the end source and the end drain generating current between the source and the drain. The applied gate voltage needed to turn on the MOSFET is called the threshold voltage or VTN. Once the MOSFET is turned on, the drain and source terminal behaves just like an ohmic resistor and the IDS versus VDS curve is a straight line. We call this the linear region. Increasing VDS will cause linear increase of IDS just like an ohmic resistor. If we increase VDS until it is equal to the threshold voltage VTN, the curve starts to become nonlinear. This is because the inversion layer near the drain terminal becomes more narrow and therefore increasing the channel resistance so the curve slope gradually decreases. As VDS is further increased, the inversion layer near the drain terminal will become even more narrow until it appears like a point. This is what we call the pinch-off point. The drain to source current IDS at this point will become saturated to almost a fixed value. The value of VDS that produces this pinch-off point is called VDS set. Increasing VDS beyond this VDS set value will not increase IDS any further. It has become saturated. Therefore, the IDS versus VDS curve become a straight horizontal line which we call this region the saturation region. As the applied VGS changes, the IDS versus VDS curve also changes as can be seen in this figure. The black line shows the IDS versus VDS curve for three VGS values. Also can be seen in this graph is the load line which is a straight blue line. The load line is helpful in visualizing the region in which the MOSFET is biased. The two end of the load line is determined if IDS equals to zero and if VDS equals to zero. The Q points of the transistor is given by this IDS and VDS value. Amplifier is usually designed to have a Q point near the middle of the saturation region. As the VGS increases, the Q point move up the load line. The blue dotted line in this figure is the VDS set line. This line is important to see the transition between the saturation region and non-saturation region. As the VGS increase above the transition point value, the transistor become biased in the non-saturation region. The curve tracer can be used to view the MOSFET characteristic. Please refer to the previous video on how to use the curve tracer. 
Okay, now let's look at the experiments. Before you begin, make sure you have read all the lab instructions. Follow each step carefully. If you are not sure, ask the demo or myself. It is recommended that you prepare the tables and list all the required result parameters that you need to measure, to measure and calculate. Throughout the experiment, you will be using variation of common source MOSFET amplifier. I will show you the simulation example for the first part of the experiment. The, so, the circuit shown here is the common source MOSFET amplifier. You are given the value of RD and you are supposed to vary the gate voltage so that the amplifier is biased at the optimal Q point. Here I have constructed the circuit as in figure 1 in your lab instructions. Please make sure that you use the correct resistor value and also the correct type of MOSFET which is the N-channel MOSFET to N7000. Please also make sure that you properly grounded your sources and your circuit. Now that we are ready to simulate, click simulate, choose DC sweep. In this experiment, what we want is to increase the VGS or vary the VGS and observe the IDS and VDS. So in the parameter, we choose VGS and we want to sweep the VGS say from value of 1 volts until 10 volts with an increment of 0 0.01 so as an output we select this point which is the VDS and IDS and we also want to know exactly what is the value of the VGS that turn on the MOSFET so we click it now that everything is ready we click run DC switch Okay, from this graph here, we can see that the MOSFET is essentially turned on at a value roughly around 2.1 to 2.3 volts. So let's change our sweep value so that we can focus on this point. Let's change this to 1.8 and stop at around 3 volts and increase the increment. 0.001 everything else stays the same we will run this is with okay now that we have focused our plot at around when the MOSFET is turned on we can see that at the gate voltage before 2.2 volt the MOSFET act essentially as an open circuit and does not allow any current flow between the drain and the source after 2.2 volts, we can see that the MOSFET slowly allowing current to flow between the drain to source until the VDS is essentially zero and the IDS is at its maximum. Repeat the simulation for figure 2 and 3 just by reconstructing the circuits as in the figure in your lab instructions. For part B, you are required to design common source MOSFET amplifier with source degeneration. Please show your calculation accordingly in the lab report on how you obtain your components value. Each student is required to submit individual lab report and submit it on the following day. Check the rubric for marking scheme in iFolio. Don't forget to include your pre-lab work in your report. Thank you.